Okay, so here we are, and I'm just starting the PC off, just powering it up. So I'll just try and get it syncing. Okay, looks like it's offset to the left a bit again, but you can see there's the grub menu, it's worked this time. So I'll just press enter, override the timer. Yeah, it looks like the first character is missing. Must be something to do with the video timing on this PC. Okay, so yeah, apologies for the first column missing, but it's booted okay. There's been no errors. Uh, let's see if we can scroll back. Yeah, there's no errors there at all. So I'll log in as the root. And that's fine. There's our partition, 12 gigabytes. And uh, let's ping the name server. Okay, so it looks like maybe the network is not working. Just check, yeah, the cable's come out. It's a cable that hasn't got the clamp on it. So let's try that again, that's better. So now it's working. And I'll try the kernel.org. And that's working, it's resolved it and it's working. Um, let's check the kernel version. So that looks all good. And uh, let's look at the proc CPU info, put that through less. And also the UK keyboard's working, that pipe appeared rather than the hash sign. So there's the first um, logical core. And there's the second one. So we've got two cores available. Can confirm that with top. Um, if I press Z and then A, uh, not Q, A, no, one, sorry. There you go, it says up here CPU 0 and CPU 1, so that's good. Um, and if I type 3, um, yeah, there's 4 gig in this machine, but obviously the way 32-bit uh, memory layout works, uh, there's actually only 3.3 gig available. But that's the same as it was in LFS5. Obviously, it's effectively the same kernel, just been compiled um, with different versions of GCC and for different processes. In fact, that could be why the kernel's slightly smaller. Um, there's a newer version of GCC, so it may be a bit more efficient. So that is the end of the build of Linux from Scratch 6.3. Like I said, it was a, um, quite a lot of work. I thought I could get from version 4 to 6.3, but because, um, well, I think the main reason was the fact that a version 2.6 kernel was required for 6.3 and it had to be com uh, compiled with um, GCC version 3 um, or newer. I think that was part of the problem, despite the fact that version 4 did have a version 3 GCC, it might not have been old enough or the um, Linux, uh, the uh, Linux kernel 2.4 that that used might not have been new enough. The glibc might not have been new enough. It, it just didn't work. Um, I was just ending up fixing issues and I think I was creating other issues and just going round and round in circles in the end. So um, jumping to version 5 first and then uh, on to 6.3 was clearly the better option because... Um, well, there's no issues at all with Linux of Scratch 5, and there's just one issue that that modification I had to make to the first pass of GCC um, in the tool section of Linux of Scratch 6.3 uh, with the SSP setting. Um, that was the only uh, modification I had to make to the instructions. But yeah, apart from that, as you can see, it's all been successful. Um, I'm not sure what the next version is going to be at the moment. I need to look into that and then test it. Um, and like I've said previously, I'm not sure what the situation is with um, 
getting onto 64 bit the actual live cd um, does provide there are two images a 32 bit image and a 64 bit image so it would have been possible to go to 64 bit but being as there was no indication or no mention of 64 bit in the 6, uh, 6.3 version book um, only I think it's mentioned in passing but there's nothing specific about um, 64 bit um, that's why I just stuck with the 32 bit version even though I'm on the Pentium 4 that has got 64 bit capabil capabilities um, so yeah I'd, I presume the next version is going to be um, a version that uh, can be built specifically for 64 bit will have um, mention of 64 bit in the instructions but as I say whether those instructions will enable the conversion the cross compilation from 32 bit to 64 bit I don't know I doubt it because I can't remember seeing anything that might indicate that to be the case besides which I'm almost certain you'd need a 64-bit kernel compiled um, and yeah I, I don't really know um, it's something I need to look into it may be a case that I might have to run through cross uh, Linux from scratch to get to 64-bit and then carry on with the carp compiles from there so uh, there that's something I'll look in for the future It'd be interesting right so there's just one other thing I've got to do now, and that's to install um, some networking programs just so I can access uh, remote machines and download packages and so on. So what I've done, I've um, rebooted the machine into Linux from scratch 5, and as you can see, I've um, basically mounted uh, the Linux from scratch 6.3 partition mounted all virtual file systems and re-entered the true environment as I've done before to build these remotely just to ease things along um, so what I need to do next is to go to the um, Beyond Linux from Scratch book which I think I've got here on the server yes I have and what I want to install Oh, wrong one. BLFS. Uh, what I want to install is OpenSSL, OpenSSH, WGET and Lynx. Um, WGET and Lynx, handy in their own right. Lynx is a web browser, text web browser. WGET allows to fetch files directly. Um, they both use OpenSSL, but it seems OpenSSL um, has still been too old to be useful on modern machines or to connect to modern websites and so on so it's a bit of a moot point whether they are that useful but certainly useful for my local server which uh, doesn't use any form of um, encryption like that so um, it's not too much a deal so I'm going to go to OpenSSL first of all uh, in fact I'll get all these up So I want the OpenSSH server because I want to be able to connect into this machine. And then wget and finally links. I'm not going to worry about all the other setup and so on that is involved with BLFS. I just want to get the basic system ready for the next build. So OpenSSL, I need to actually connect to the server as well to download these so let's go into sources make a BLFS directory change into it and use the links remember this is from version 5 we're on to connect to uh, right yeah of course I need to do this outside of uh, the LFS 6 or 3 obviously I can't do it within the true environment so I need to SSH to put in Pro 200 separately um, right 
now I need to change into LFS sources BLFS that's better and then links yeah that's it so I need to go to BLFS and download each one of these so first one's open SSL Then open SSH. Wget. And links. So that's all done. I'll leave that connected there in case I need to go back. Um, inside LFS5, but apart from that, we should see those files there now, there they are. So I can extract the first one, open SSL. Oops. Open SSL. and start by building. So as an optional recommendation, we're not going to bother with that. It's just to get the basic program running, I'm not going to run the test suites. So I'll start with the patch and it looks like we can just put these commands straight in and build a whole lot. I'm still not sure whether this will allow modern machines to connect, but certainly as you've seen, I should be able to connect using the Pentium Pro um, server uh, as a piggyback on, onto this machine. So it shouldn't be any problems if we can't connect directly. That's interesting because it looks like OpenSSL has identified the processor as a Pentium, which would be the basic Pentium rather than the Pentium 4 or anything else. So that's quite interesting. But at least it looks like we're getting some acceleration or uh, uh, optimization there. And it's even compiling with O3 as well. Okay, that's done. I'm not going to run a test. I'll just install it with all these commands. Okay, that's all complete. Tidy that up. And we'll move on to open SSH. So 
So again, there's a load of options, optional packages, but I'm not going to worry about them. Open SSH. So to start off with, we need to install a user and group to run the programs, make it a bit more secure. And let's see if there's any other options here we could change. I think these are defaults. Yeah, there's nothing else to change here. In fact, I've just realized I'm going to stop this and start again that um, I need to change the settings in the route because I don't know exactly um, what the make flags is set to. I don't think it's set to anything actually. No, it isn't. So I'm going to uh, change. And export make flags equals um, just minus J2. And let me tidy that up actually. That could have made the OpenSSL compilation a little bit faster. So I'll log out and go back in again. Echo make flags and it's been set. So CD sources BLFS, I'll extract open SSH again and redo these. So I don't need to do these again because that user and group will already exist, but I need to rerun the commands from here. Okay, that's done. So let's just go straight ahead and install it. Can I remove users SCP? No such directory. Oh, right. Okay. So it's because it's assuming that the tests have been run. Um, they rename SCP um, because they need to use the new SCP to run the tests. So it looks like, yeah, that's why it's failed. It's failed on the very first command because user bin SCP doesn't exist because um, we haven't run the tests. And so nothing's been done. And then it tests, uh, it looks like the logic for this is a bit wrong. It tests to see if SCP.back's there. It should have tested to see if user bin SCPs there as well. Um, so that's why that's all failed. So what we need to do is just, well, we can run it from here. In theory, we just run this, this bit from here, but I'll run it from here. And that should all complete. Yeah, that's better. 
And the final thing I'm going to do is we want root login because we won't have a user. I'm not going to bother setting up a user, so I need to edit this to ensure that we can log in um, with the root. So look for permit. And you can see there it is there. So just take that hash out and that will allow the root to log in. Um, we didn't install Linux PAM support, so all we've got to do is to install the Linux from scratch boot scripts, which I failed to download on the server. So let's um, tidy this up. Go back to the server. Is that a direct link? Let's have a look to see where that goes. Right, that's the link. If that's going to work, I doubt it. Uh, let me just check they're not on here. No, they're not. No, it doesn't look like that's worked. So I need to find somewhere to download them from. Um, now, where did I have them originally? Right, let me have a look. Right, I've got them. I'm just doing this on a separate terminal and copy BLFS. Right, sorry about that. That's something I forgot to prepare for. Um, right, it should be there now. So if I do um, links again into BLFS, yeah, there it is there. So if I download that, save it, quit. Now I should be able to extract boot scripts and I want to run make install sshd yep that's done so that's ssh done next we've got um, well I could try ssh could I yeah let's try it Try going to Pension Pro 200. Yep, that's allowing me to get in. Yep, that's worked. So that's the SSH working for 6.3. So let's come back out and now let's extract wget and begin compilation so those are straightforward instructions Okay, that's done. Um, let's see if there's I could, something I could download. Yeah, let's try this. Um, uh, 
and let's do wget and download let's download wget again um, that will be in blfs Yep, that's done. You can see that it's saved it with a dot one on the end because the file name already exists. So if I do md5 sum wget star, you can see they've both got the same signature. And that's the newer one. As you can see, it's... Um, in fact, it looks like... Yeah, it looks like uh, wget has preserved the timestamp. You can see it says the 5th of June, whereas Lynx has set its own timestamp the day that we downloaded, i.e. now, um, actually downloaded the file. So it's a subtle difference there between using Lynx and wget. So let's get rid of that copy. We don't need that. So that's wget finished with. And finally, let's do Lynx. Um, I don't think there's any extra options to set here. Now I tried to use the SSL option before and it didn't work. It was as if it needed the SSL lib or lib SSL library. So it doesn't mention that here. Um, it does mention that it will use open SSL, but it didn't seem to work. Um, and if you use it, you can do GNU TLS, there's an option for that. So I'll try it again, but um, I suspect if the last attempt for version 5 is anything to go by, it won't work. Um, actually, we can put that in. And let's try it. Yeah, it looks like it has worked this time. I just saw it whiz past. So maybe there's a bug or it was implemented incorrectly previously. Okay, so that looks like it's worked. Let's see if it'll actually build now. Yep, that looks like that option has worked. So, um, maybe it means that we'll be able to connect to uh, encrypted pages, possibly. I say may just fail anyway, because the uh, type of encryption's too old. So, there's just a few other changes to make here. And that's it, so let's see if it can work to the local machine. Uh, P Pro 200. Uh, oh, well, let's just try this. And you can see it's using a much nicer dark scheme. It's a, a lot easier to read, I think. Um, let's download. Oh, that should view, actually, yes, if I press enter. So that's worked. Let's try and download it. 
So now we've got two options, save it to disk or to view it because it's a, a text file, it knows what it is. Let's come out and view that. Uh, yep, there it is. So you can see that's downloaded. Okay. Uh, for some reason, I've noticed this before. Um, links put these these headers in. I presume that's because it converts the text file to a, like a XML file or a web page. So it's a bit annoying, but um, I suppose that's where wget comes in. You'd use wget rather than links to download uh, this text file accurately. Um, let's try and connect to, for example, Linux from scratch.org. Yeah, it can't make the secured connection, so unfortunately that doesn't work. I doubt if there's a, oh, there is a, I oh, know it is trying to connect securely. Yeah, so it, it still doesn't work. The, um, I presume the encryption's just too old. But as I say, at least I've got connection to my local uh, machine, which is the important thing. So that's all the extra packages from BLFS I'll be installing. And um, that'll be ready for the next uh, version of LFS that I'll be building on top of 6.3 in this series. So I hope you found them uh, interesting in these videos. Uh, appreciate a thumbs up if you have done and click the icon on the bottom right to subscribe to the channel and you can uh, opt to hear about any new videos I post. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.